Boris Johnson is rebuked by the Prime Minister over his much-publicised push for more money for England's NHS. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at 6. Boris Johnson arrived at Downing Street this morning, determined, it seemed, to demand more money for the NHS in England. But instead, it's understood that the Foreign Secretary was rebuked by the Prime Minister for his highly publicised push to get an extra £100 million a week. Theresa May told the Cabinet that such conversations about the future of the NHS should remain private. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, reports from Westminster. Well, there are more doctors and nurses employed in the National Health Service in England than ever before. And this year, spending on England's NHS will go up by more than £2 billion. But at the same time, there have been unprecedented demands on the NHS. So how much more money does it need? Our health editor, Hugh, Hugh Pym, has been taking a closer look at the numbers, Hugh. Well, Sophie, there are growing... Our health editor, Hugh Pym. It's emerged that police are investigating a new allegation of sexual assault made against the convicted rapist John Warboys, who committed offences while driving a London black cab. He was jailed indefinitely in 2009, but is due to be released at the end of this month. Our Home Affairs... A court has heard how an unemployed man from Cardiff, accused of carrying out the Finsbury Park terror attack last year, told people in a pub just days before that he was a soldier and he was going to kill all Muslims. 48-year-old Darren Osborne is on trial for murder and attempted murder after the attack near two North London mosques. He denies the charges. Our Home Affairs correspondent Daniel Sanford reports. The Ministry of Defence has regained control of a defence review that was expected to have ended in major cuts for the armed forces. It's been seen as a significant move and a victory for the Defence Secretary, Gavin Williamson. Jonathan. The Weddell Sea, named after a 19th century British sailor, are some of the most remote waters in Antarctica. For much of the year, the vast area is covered in ice, but beneath it, scientists have discovered unique ecosystems, so rare that they are calling for these waters to be given special protection. Our environment correspondent, Claire Marshall, has travelled on board a Greenpeace ship to the Weddell Sea off the Antarctic Peninsula, and she was able to dive down beneath the surface in a submarine to see for herself what the scientists have found. Here's her exclusive report. A move by Rupert Murdoch's media giant, 21st Century Fox, to take over Sky has had a major setback. The Competition and Markets Authority has provisionally blocked the £11 billion deal because of fears it would give Murdoch too much control over the media in the UK. Our media... Amo, thank you. Labour's key decision-making body, the National Executive Committee, has met for the first time since three new members, all from the grassroots group Momentum, were elected to the ruling body. Now, Britain's Carl Edmund has pulled off a spectacular win at the Australian Open to reach his first Grand Slam semi-final. The world number 49 beat the third seed, Grigor Dimitrov, making him only the sixth British man to reach the last four at a Grand Slam for 50 years. Joe Wilson reports. Neil Diamond has announced that he is retiring from performing with great reluctance and disappointment after being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Now, the Oscar nominations are out, and leading the field with 13 nominations is the fantasy romance The Shape of Water, starring the British actress Sally Hawkins. The Best Actor category is dominated by Brits, with Gary Oldman, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Daniel Kaluuya, all nominated. And Meryl Streep, who already has three Oscars to her name, has been nominated for the 21st time in her career, this time for her role in The Post. Our arts editor, Will Gompertz, has more. 